Hello, my name is Leopoldo Armesto and in this video I would like to explain you how to control a robot with a parallelogram structure like it is the case of the UARM uh, robot that it is available by default in the Coppelia C model browser but I have made some modifications so you are able to control it using the inverse kinematic module and uh, the idea of the video is to explain um, what type of links and joints do we have in this type of robot, how they're configured, and particularly how we configure the inverse kinematic module so that we can implement, uh, in this case, closed ch uh, chains like the ones that appear in this type of parallelogram robots. Okay, so let's start by just simply first describing which are the links and joints that we have in this robot. So we have the first joint uh, sorry, the first link that we have is the robot base, is the fixed one, it's uh, link zero, and then we have a vertical joint here, which corresponds to a motor that this robot has inside here, and this joint will move the link one, which is the one I painted in, uh, in uh, red, and then from here, what we have is, uh, we actually have two joints mainly, well, we have three, but we have two joints, the first one corresponds to this motor here. It's a horizontal one and will be in charge of moving this link here. The third joint, this one here, will be indirectly moving this bar here, but in the end will, because of this mechanism here, will move this link here, which is the third link. Okay. We will see how, how this works. Okay. But let's basically describe how, how this works, okay? And because of this mechanism, this parallelogram mechanism, when the, we move these two uh, links here, this is the end effector that will be always moving according to these um, two links and always in a horizontal position uh, as, as it is designed in this, in this type of robots, okay? So let's try to understand how this kinematic um, hierarchy uh, works uh, for this type of robot. So uh, let's start with um, the first, the first link is, um, is uh, the first joint and link is rather quite uh, straightforward, but let's start with the second joint here. It will move um, the second link. And now what I would like to do is to close a, kinem uh, a kinematic chain so that this bar here, it's always attached to the first link. So what I do is I have a joint here. I have a link that will move according to this joint. I have a dummy that I will explain later, but I have another joint here. And depending on this joint, I have another link. And then at the end of it, I have a dummy. This dummy is linked with a dummy that I have attached here that depends on the link one, it's through a joint, an axillary joint. So these two dummies are on the same position, but one of them, it's controlled with the motor two or the, the second joint, while the other one will be attached to the first link and it's just simply freely rotating uh, with this joint. So the idea is that Copelisim is able to compute the co course, the correct values for the angles for these joints so that whenever we move this second link, the structure always is attached here to the first link. Okay, so that's the idea. And in order to do that, what we have to do is just simply double click here on the on the dummy and select, in, in this case, which dummy you want to link it. And in this case, I link it with, <clears throat> sorry, I link it to this uh, dummy here, and the link type I selected is the inverse kinematic tip, ta uh, tip target uh, type, and uh, that's how we have selected or how we have configured uh, this relation. Also, we have uh, on this side, let's see it from this side. So again, uh, from this link here, Whenever this link here moves and rotates, remember we have a dummy here that I said that I will mention later, but also we have another joint here, which is that one. With this joint, we have that whenever this joint moves, that uh, we can move this uh, link here, this is the third link, and then we have another closed kinematic change here. So 
this is another joint, axillary joints, this is another link, this is another joint, and this is the last link. And in this case, what I've done is I have a dummy just right here that depends on this kinematic chain and another dummy that depends only on the orientation of this motor here, this joint. Okay, and these two dummies are also linked. So whenever I rotate this dummy with this motor, what that I would like to do is the software to compute the correct orientation for this dummy here and indirectly compute the proper positions for the joints so that everything matches here. Okay, so actually the third joint will be indirectly moving the third link, as I, as I said at the beginning. Okay, and with this motion and together with this, the second uh, joint, this uh, this bar here will change the orientation and uh, this bar, bar here also will modify, uh, I mean the orientation of this uh, link here will be modified. So indirectly, now what I would like to do is to close this kinematic uh, chain here, okay? And to do that, what I have is uh, this joint here, yeah, which depends on uh, the third link, this joint here. And then I have the end effector, which is the fourth link here. And then I have another joint, and then I have this link, and then at the end of this link I have the tip of it, which is linked with the one I had and the one I mentioned at the beginning, which depends on the third uh, auxiliary link here, as you can see. Okay. So, uh, in order to make this uh, simulation work, we have to make sure that the joints are in the proper mode. So, the first, second, and third joints the ones with the motors are in passive mode. As you can see here, they are in passive mode. The one, second, and the third are in passive mode. The rest of links are, uh, well, the fourth the fourth as well, because, because it's uh, a joint. I haven't explained it, but it's a joint to just to eject this uh, tool. But the thing is that, oh, to rotate, sorry, to rotate this tool. But the thing is that uh, the first three joints that are the ones I'm interested in, are passive joints, and the rest of joints, the axillary joints, are all of them in inverse kinematic mode, which means that the software will compute the position of this joint by its own, okay, with the inverse kinematic module. So as you can see, this is inverse kinematic, this is inverse kinematic mode, inverse kinematic mode, inverse kinematic mode, and so on, okay? And once we have the dummies linked and we have the joints in the inverse kinematic mode, then what we have to do is to configure the inverse kinematic module so that the software solves all the problems for us. So in order to do that, we go for the calculation modules, we go to the kinematics um, module, and then we have to create a new ICA group. In this case, uh, you have uh, I have created already and I have configured it in this way, as you can see. I have checked the mechanism is redundant. I have set as the calculation method the DLS, which is one of my preferred methods. Uh, I have configured 100 iterations and this dumping parameter here. And then I edit the ICA elements. And then I added three tips, the ones dummies with the A. And as you can see, all of them depend uh, on the UR link one because all of them depend on this, the movement of this link here. And uh, the first one, it's constrained in the X, Y, and Z position. The second one, it's a special one because I have also selected this gamma position because the second one is this dummy I have here. Let me, that one I have in here. Uh, I have selected the gamma here because I want this joint here to be moved that will rotate this dummy and the orientation of this dummy is important so that it's forced to be the same of this one and indirectly will move this bar here. And the third one, which is that one here, the third one is that one here, only has the constraints X, Y, and Z. So it's only constrained in position. It's free in, in orientation. Okay, so with that, what we have is also created a script that I will add to the, um, to the description of the video because this yellow uh, font uh, that we have for the user interface is not uh, 
easy to see. So I will uh, copy paste in, uh, this uh, code in the, in the video description. And uh, that's just simply to create, as you can see, a user interface, a very basic user interface so we can play around with the joints. So if we move the first join, you can see how this robot works. It's just simply these first joints. Uh, it's useful to orientate, obviously, the robot arm to the correct direction. This is the second join that is actually moving this second link, remember? And as you can see, as long as I move this join, the rest of the structure, this parallelogram structure, moves occur accordingly thanks to the to the inverse kinematic model configuration that we have set. And then the third join indirectly will move this link here, which in turns will move this link here. Yeah, as you can see. Uh, no matter what, but always the end effector is horizontal thanks to this parallelogram robot structure. Okay, so thank you very much.